This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. More on them later in the video. I'm sure you know by now that I love organizing things, and I also love my new CNC machine. But this thing is just not organized whatsoever. To be more precise, there's three major things that I want to fix, and we're going to fix all of those in this video. The first one is this situation that I've got going on with my collets and cutters and tools that I need to change all those things. I have nowhere to put them. Sometimes I store them on the table here, which definitely isn't great. But then I had a great idea to use this drawer to store all my stuff. But still, just putting everything in here just gets everything out of the way. But let's be honest, this is still just a complete mess. So today's video, I want to make custom 3D printed inserts for all of this tooling. I want everything to have its own spot, super easily accessible, so I can just grab whatever I need and start actually working. The next thing I want to fix is everything that's going on under here. This machine is pretty big, at least for my workshop, and all the space underneath here is right now just wasted. I want to make a rack where I can store different materials, and I want to utilize as much of the space underneath here as possible. And the last thing that arguably is the most important thing, and that is the way I've just got my computer set up right here, it's just placed on this bar that I made out of 3D printed parts and broomstick, and oh, it's pretty cool. It's really, really unstable, and the amount of times I'm almost knocked the computer over and broken it, it's just too many to count, and it's gonna happen eventually. So before that happens, I wanna fix all that with a movable arm that can swing out and support my computer really securely and have it easily accessible, and then swing out of the way when I don't need it. But we gotta start somewhere, so let's start by 3 d printing out some parts and organizing our drawer. All right, so that's a pretty good start. We've got everything out of here and I'm glued in this grid system in the bottom of the drawer. And in case you haven't seen these boxes or this grid system before, I have a ton of videos where I show you a bunch of these. I have this in basically all the drawers and in a bunch of other places in my workshop. The bottom of the boxes have the same grid feature, which allows me to put the box anywhere in the drawer and it will stay in place no matter how much I move it around. It will even do the same thing in these assortment cases and here, you can even turn it upside down and all the bits will stay in place. Like I said, I have a ton of really cool stuff and videos about making all of that. Check that out up here. In today's video, we're gonna focus on these bits. And the very first thing we're gonna do is organize all our collets. And for that, I printed this thing. So this, like all the other boxes, will lock into that grid system and it has dedicated spots for these collets and the nuts can go right up here. And since I have a bunch of these collet nuts, sometimes I like to have them connected to the collets that I use most often, in which case I can just keep them connected and store those up here and I have four spots for those for all four collet nuts that I have. So we'll start with this one down in the bottom corner here. And oh, by the way, I also printed some spaces where I can put some labels so I know exactly which size goes where. And next up is gonna be one that's pretty similar to one you've seen before, that being the drill bit organizer. Only difference is that this time we're organizing the cutting bits for the mill. And just like the drill bit organizer, this is a two part design where all the cutting bits are easily accessible at the top. And then in the bottom half of the box, we have some extra storage. And to make more use of that storage, I printed two inserts, which will perfectly sit inside of that box. And you can even put this lid back on. So now instead of having my cutting bits randomly placed in boxes like this, I can store them in a dedicated spot in this box. And like you just saw, my surfacing bit has a dedicated spot going in there. And there's places to store all different sorts and sizes of cutting bits. Everything from really small to really big. Some V-Groove cutters, locating pins. And I even have some extra room to add more cutting bits later on. Now, just like with the drill organizer that I made earlier, all of these slots have a little lower section in the back so that when you push down here, the cutter flips up a little bit and it makes it super easy to grab a hold of. And that's especially nice for really small ones. Right, moving on, I've been thinking a little bit and sort of tried to figure out what sort of things are convenient to have next to a CNC machine. And we're gonna organize all those things in these standard boxes that I have everywhere else in my workshop. By the way, if you wanna download any of these, I have them in sizes, everything from one by ones, two by sixes, one by sevens, and everything else. All of that can be downloaded from my website, which is alch.shop. Now, first up is this really long one, and into this one, 
I'm gonna have the tools that I need to change the collet. Then I also have 3D boxes with screws because I like to screw stuff down to my spoil board. I figured this would be really convenient to have. And then one more box, just so I have a convenient place to store my knife. And now we're on to the very last new box for this build. I think you can guess what this thing is for. It's to perfectly hold a set of calipers and in the extra space, a measuring tape, just because that's also convenient to have. And then we'll organize the rest of the space with these boxes and in those, I'll store all my spare cutting bits so I have those neatly organized as well. Huh? Doesn't this just look so much better? Everything is neatly organized. I can grab whatever I need and I know where everything is and if anything is missing. So that's the first one of my problems solved. The next one is going to be the storage system underneath the whole machine. Oh, and by the way, all these are printed in filaments sent to me by AdNorth. This particular one is printed in XPLA, which not only has this lovely flat surface finish, but it's also extra strong. They'll also be kind enough to give you guys 15% off when you use the coupon code ALCH. I'll also leave a link in the description below. Okay. So the plan here is to use as much of the space underneath the machine for storage. And as you can see, I've already cut a sheet on the F just to sort of demonstrate how we're gonna do this. Now my plan is to basically just build a box with three shelves in it, and so that we get as much space here as possible, I'm gonna lower these two aluminum extrusions as far down as they'll go, both in the front and back, and I'm actually gonna cut these braces down so they end up being a lot shorter. So, it's time to take this thing and attach it together ah, with all these other MDF pieces I've already cut. So, let's assemble this. All right, it's the day after. As you can see, this thing is painted and it's time to see if we can fit this thing down underneath here. Now, in preparation for this, I've done a few things. First of all, I moved these two aluminum extrusions all the way down. I've also removed these braces that used to be here. And there's one more thing I've done which is gonna help us attach the box to the frame itself. I'm gonna do that the same way basically the whole machine is put together. And that is with these really cool threaded insert thingies that can slide into the T-tracks here and into the MDF box. I drilled a bunch of holes. And if I've done it right, hopefully all these inserts that I've installed both in the bottom, on the sides, and in the back brace will line up with the holes that I've drilled in the frame. So I think it's time to see if that thing will actually fit in there. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators where you can learn new skills, deepen existing passions, or get lost in creativity. They have classes in basically anything you've ever wanted to learn, either it's 3D modeling, woodworking, or video editing. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium content. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. One class that I'm really interested in is Marquez Brownlee's class on YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. I think this is gonna be a really good one. And it better be quick because the first thousand of my subscribers that click the link in my description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. Was it? It fit. <laughs> well, now the question is if I've made the holes in the right place, because if I've done this right, these screws should now line up. They sure do. I don't like. I'm a little bit surprised that <laughs> this is actually working. Well, surprisingly enough, all the ones in the front actually lined up, and I managed to tighten all the screws. Now I got four more screws in the very back here. All right, so now this might get a little bit tight, but the first of the two things that are gonna stiffen up this whole structure is this piece. This is the back that I originally installed when I built this whole box. I've taken this off. It will act as a support and screw into these inserts right here. All right. <laughs> and now to do the same thing in the front, I've cut this piece of plywood, again, with some holes that will hopefully line up with some inserts that I installed in the aluminum extrusion up here. This thing should go in like this. Now, luckily, all these screws are super easily accessible. Right, this thing is firmly attached. The whole thing feels super stable, but I still want to get as much rigidity as possible. Now, installing these back on here would unfortunately block this top shelf. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna chop these down and we get full use of all three of our shelves. 
<laughs> right, they're a whole lot shorter now. Only problem is that we still need some way of attaching them to the frame because these originally came with these slots milled into them. That's no problem though, because luckily we have a milling machine. So over here on the milling machine, I've just chucked the piece up in my machinist mice. So I'm now gonna cut this big hole, which is gonna be for the head of the bolt. And afterwards we'll drill the hole in the middle, which is gonna be for the screw itself. And now we've done this right. I think that looks all right. I mean, it's pretty much the same as the other side. I think this works. I know it's a whole lot shorter, but combined with this piece, I think that's gonna be plenty. I mean, this thing is not going anywhere. Man, it's gonna be so nice to have old material, super easily accessible, right underneath where I'm actually gonna cut them. I have some birch plywood in different thicknesses, some poplar and some thick MDF. I'm sure what's in here will change over time, but what I need right now is one sheet of 50 mil birch plywood because it's time to finally tackle the third and final part of this video. And that is this rickety table here that is currently holding my computer. I've already got a design drawn up, so instead of talking about it, let's just make it. I'll show you how it works afterwards. All right, so let's see if we can turn all these parts into something that will hold my computer. I think I've got everything I need. I've removed the tabs, I sanded all the parts a little bit. There's some areas that I know the parts need to fit together. So that I made sure that everything actually fits. And also this plywood is a little bit thicker than last time. So the tabs are slightly snugger. We'll make it work. All right, so let's start putting this thing together. How snug is this? Oh, that's all right. <laughs> and now you can start to see how this pivoting mechanism is gonna work. First, I'll add the rest of the frame. <laughs> All right. Spinny bit, also called the table. Stationary bit. These parts go together like that. And then the same thing is going on up here. It's not very spinny, is it? Huh? Well, I think once one of these parts is bolted to the frame, I think this is all right. All right, so this whole thing is meant to go onto the side of the machine here. The way I'm gonna attach it is the same way I attached the frame underneath there. That is with those inserts. I pushed a bunch of those into the slots there. Now, hopefully try to assemble this whole thing without too much difficulty. All right, so it did take a little bit of convincing, but I've now got a fully functioning arm that can hold my computer. It swings around and doesn't actually interfere with anything because in the beginning, it kind of did. To begin with, I had a little bit of an issue of this surface here didn't quite line up with the front here. Must have measured something wrong. I fixed that by cutting off a little bit with my track saw and just sanded the corner around again. So now it perfectly lines up. Then I thought it was done, but when I started moving the machine around, turns out the gear on the motor in the back here sort of collided with the entire frame. So I had to take my multi-tool, chop off a little bit, but now it actually fits. Now, in addition to the computer, on the top, I have a little shelf on the bottom here for this touch plate so that I can super easily just chuck that in there and the little magnet goes onto this washer that I've attached to the side. I chose to attach the emergency stop button on the frame itself instead of this thing so that no matter where this is, I can always super easily hit this. And guys, doesn't this look so much cleaner than what we started with? Not to mention that I don't have to constantly worry about knocking my computer over every time I walk past the machine. So I think that's it for this video. Remember, I have all the files for all of these inserts available on my website, which is alch.shop. I also have a ton of other really cool projects there, so be sure to go check that out. So I think that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna start on my next project, which is hopefully redeeming myself from the failures that I had making a chair the last video. If you haven't seen that yet, go check that out up here. As for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. All right, now how do I make this work? Oh, yeah, by the way, it's still broken. <laughs>